Welcome to Orbitown Weekly. Woo! It's Friday. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Welcome back. I'm excited for today. It's been a really, really good week. There's a lot of really good updates, I think, that we can give, and, and we have a super cool topic. Yes. Today we're going to cover new company signups. We've got Lion Rock and Sierra Madre, uh, the product update, and our topic for the week is AI uh, native companies versus AI enabled companies. Yeah, I think that's a really cool topic too, especially right now, because I think that's really when you broadly want to bucket companies into two categories, it's really AI enabled and AI native. Mm-hmm. And we'll kind of run through what that means before we go mm-hmm. go deeper into the definition and, and how it works. But yeah, I mean, this week we brought on, uh, we were able to get Lion Rock and Sierra Madre live. And so we're super excited to have them on. Uh, both very exciting projects. Sierra Madre is our first producer that we have on the platform. So very, very excited to have them live. On the product side, there's been a few updates. Uh, we've we've definitely made some big changes to our dashboard where we can now filter by lead source. We can see which chats are coming in from what source of traffic, which is really helpful for the company when they're looking at evaluating their marketing efforts and knowing which ones have activity and conversion and which ones mm-hmm. don't. On our complex pipeline, we've been able to implement a system that actually runs the query and then does a series of parallel queries to make sure it finds all the necessary information before it provides it to the user. So not just making it accurate, but increasing the depth of information we can pull. That was a big update that took us a couple weeks to really build and roll out. So we're super excited to have that out and in the hands of people. The next lever that we want to play with is the time to respond. The complex model is basically like OpenAI's deep research functionality. And so with that, it means that it takes longer to actually process. Some queries can take up to two minutes, even three minutes. So we want to make sure that we can condense that for for certain ones by either yeah. having pre-built searches. ChatGPT's deep research sometimes takes like 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It can go a very, very long time. Our focus is immediate, um, immediate 24-7 answers. Um, yeah. If our chatbots took 20 minutes to get a response. I think people are clicking off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We want to make sure we're quick and we can yeah. kind of continue the conversation. So super excited for that. There's a lot of other things that are in the pipeline for the new year. Uh, you know, some of the things that we talked about, like phone agents, uh, updated CRM systems. So that's where a lot of our time and energy is going to go for uh, over the holidays is mm-hmm. really building that out. But yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. What do you think our chatbot's name would be? I might want to call it Sean. Oh, really? (laughs) For the reason, for the reason that probably the person I know who's best at pitching is Mm -hmm. Sean. And so I want Orbiton to be the best at pitching. So it's going to be his replacement Mm -hmm. when he gets older. It feels like a Bart to me. (laughs) Feels like a Bart. (laughs) Yeah. That's like the San Francisco transit system. It's called Bart. That feels... Like it should be right. Yeah, Bay Area Rapid Transit, BART. Love it. Love it. It's such a good name. It's a perfectly fitting name. Um, you know, it's actually funny. On on, I saw this clip today, or I think it was yesterday, where it was Zuckerberg talking about Facebook. Mm-hmm. And so he mentioned something where it's like, why, why did Facebook succeed and other people didn't? Because Facebook wasn't a completely it's novel idea like there was myspace Mm -hmm. friendster and also they did have competitors why Mm -hmm. did they succeed when others failed what do you think complete betrayal and manipulation (laughs) (laughs) just just the cold hard business i i think like the only reason that people joined facebook was because other people they knew were on facebook um but that still doesn't answer the question is like, how did anyone sign up at all? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm going to get, I'm going to take a guess and say just like user friendly and probably simple at the time. Yeah. So, okay. That's a really good point. So especially the user friendly part, mm-hmm. he was saying that it was basically that nobody was taking it seriously. Mm-hmm. So like when it first started, they were like, oh, okay. It's this thing for college kids, mm-hmm. whatever. Then they were like, okay, it's not just college kids. It's going across all these different platforms. Interesting. 
Um, but they were like, okay, but it's not making money. Mm-hmm. And then it started making money. And then they're like, yeah, but it's it's not going to make it when we do the switch to mobile. When we switch from desktop to mobile, mobile comes out, Facebook's going to die. And then they succeeded at doing that. They went on mobile, mobile did well. They made acquisitions of like Instagram, which basically I think saved the company. If they didn't have Instagram, Facebook yeah. would not be as huge. Oh, it would be, it would be gone. It'd like, be gone. Yeah. yeah. This is a very smart move. And also to not change the name, to just keep it as Instagram, yeah. also a smart move. Yeah. I mean, I know like older people use Facebook still, but I genuinely only use Facebook because you have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's just necessary sometimes like it's connected to your instagram it's like there's marketplace there's marketplace and messenger messenger yeah yeah but that's that's the thing right and then by that point then people were like oh okay no no social media is huge this is a big big opportunity but it was too late like facebook already owned the market and so his point was like yeah google had like uh, a knockoff yahoo had a knockoff but all these knockoffs were just a team within a bigger company who was then trying this new thing mm-hmm. you know and so they weren't really dedicated mm-hmm. um and it's and he says he's like they were real engineers sophisticated engineers mm-hmm. we were a ragtag group of college kids yeah and so i think that is is a really good parallel i like to turn to when thinking about Orbiton and what we're doing. Like when we first started, people were like, okay, you know, you're doing like AI for investor relations. Yeah, but like, you know, do companies really want that? Like, are people really gonna use it? We rolled it out with Dolly Varden, 1600 messages in the first month, 16X increase in engagement. People wanted it. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, but are there other companies gonna do it? Plus, you can't really ask that deep questions. You know, it's only kind of like simple surface level. So, how valuable is this really? Model got better, yeah. more companies signed up. Now yeah. people are like, oh, okay. But now there's still like the thing of, okay, how big is the market? Like you're doing investor yeah. relations. How big is it really? Yeah. And with the parallel of the Facebook situation, like AI is here, social media was then. And at the start of new technology, it's just always going to be true that people are like, eh, not real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Nah, we would never do that. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, but we will. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's exactly it. Like, how long did it take for companies to start posting or having accounts on social media? Yeah. Um, the, uh, what is that survey called? The, whatever that survey is called, to McKin- McKinsey. Oh, uh, yeah, the McKinsey study. Yeah. 88% of uh, companies are using AI. And it's a stamp of like, and they also included data that, um, almost all, like most companies, 88% are using it. Most companies are not actually benefiting from it or scaling the AI at all. Or yeah, like it's not really anything. It's more of a stamp of like, okay, we've got it. We're not falling behind. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. It, and that's because new tech takes time to adopt. Mm-hmm. And so for us too, it's like, we're, we have strong utility with our customers because we are actively working with them on a like weekly, daily basis to try and make our product better and see what else we can build for them. So it's a very, very hands-on, very much not a scalable system right now. Yeah. But it will get there once we figure out the different components. And yeah. I think that goes back to like the third topic about AI-enabled mm-hmm. versus AI-native. Mm-hmm. I think most of these use cases you're talking about, mm-hmm. they're AI-enabled. Yeah. Right. That they have AI enabled means that you purchase like a software, like you would a software service and you implement it into your existing system or people within the team use AI. So your coders use AI. Mm -hmm. Um, The AI native standpoint is, for example, there's quite a few startups out of San Francisco that have are rushing towards multi-billion dollar market or valuations that are AI native law firms. The concept behind AI native. We build software, but Mm -hmm. we also have lawyers and we Mm -hmm. take on cases. Mm -hmm. And so the system is that we take on cases and we have lawyers. And over time, we try to reduce the manual versus automated. In the beginning, 20% automated, 80% manual. Over Mm -hmm. time, 80% automated, 20% manual. That means our margins increase. So we charge the same thing, make more money. And we can take on more volume because it's more automated. 
-hmm. those are the two differences between AI native and uh, an AI enabled. And so which way are we going to go? We'll see. Right now, it's kind of feeling like AI native. I think we're still defining what Orbiton is, AI native, AI enabled. And I think the internet and uh, just the world in general is also defining what that means. Um, but essentially, there's a big difference between having an AI tool um, and then having like an operating system. Mm -hmm. So you're not really replace like a Orbiton is not replacing any IR. They're mm -hmm. not replacing the people. It's an actual operating system that mm -hmm. just works within the company. Yeah. And something that's interesting that I've noticed working with more and more companies is that IR teams are severely overloaded. Yeah. Yeah. They're severely overloaded. And so they and desperately small, need help. Yeah. They're usually very small teams, like mm -hmm. even just one person. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we covered this, like, I don't know if it was last week or the week before about how um, investor behavior has changed just even with AI and just as technology progresses um, and the market being kind of volatile and unsure. It just like it's all compounding into behavior being like expecting immediate answers all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no room for like there. No, people aren't doing as much of their own research. Mm -hmm. They are expecting it to just come to them um, very quickly. And that makes sense. I mean, everyone can just type something into Google or chat GPT very easily. So I don't think that people are wanting to go and search through PDFs. No, and the, the behavior has changed. The other yeah. thing is like just the pool of investors has changed. Yeah. And so the challenge for our IR teams is they need to do more yeah. with the same tools as before and they can't. So IR is generally defined as like investor relations, dealing and managing relationships with investors and acquiring new investors. So they help with fundraises, finding new investors and, and so on and so forth. And then there's this whole other category of the market called merchant banking. Mm -hmm. And so merchant banking is essentially where you raise capital, you put together a company, you either take it public or you do an RTO, uh, you manage their back office if needed, you mm -hmm. make sure all the filings are up to date. And, and honestly, the main, main difference between IR and merchant bank is that the merchant bank takes an equity stake in terms of revenue. And so you have a much bigger market. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of parallels between the two. So we're looking at this now and saying, okay, you know, Fiore Group is very interesting because they're actually kind of like a merchant bank. They operate like a merchant bank. They put together companies, they find management teams, they raise capital, they take, they help these companies go public. Once they're public, they help them operate, they help them raise more capital and maintain relationship with investors. So I'm looking at this and I'm sitting right inside the Fiore Group. Me too. And I, yeah, and and <laughs> we're we're sitting right here, and I'm thinking, maybe there's an opportunity there. Maybe we're not. Maybe we don't evolve to just be an AI native IR firm, but we evolve into more of like an AI native merchant bank role. Mm -hmm. But still, the fundamentals of what we do day to day today mm -hmm. don't change. No, because what we're talking about is four or five years down the line. Like people are still learning what that there's so much push on companies right now. You should be using AI for your business. And just to the average person that isn't like involved in the tech world at all, they're just going to be like, okay, I'm supposed to like look things up on chat GPT or, but like, what is that? Yeah. What does it yeah, mean? Like, what, what does, does it look AI like? Mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how it evolves, but I think, I think we're in the right place. It's the right time. We are continuing to focus on our customers and serving mm -hmm. our customers and finding out what they need and how to build the solutions that they need. So we'll, we'll see how that evolves. But I think, I think it's a very exciting and rare time. Like there's a yeah. few times in your lifetime where you're able to see stuff like this, in my opinion. Everyone sign up, get Bart. Maybe we should actually name it because once we roll out the voice agent, then it can like have like a tonality. Okay. I have to come clean. My mm -hmm. favorite dog in the world is named Bart. What does he sound like if he was a person? Okay, yeah, maybe not Bart. He would sound like... <laughs> <laughs> Let's put a pin in it and, cir yeah. and circle back. Yes, I'll have more name suggestions next week. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Okay. See you guys next week. <laughs>